In Palestine, at least 28 civilians were killed in shelling by Israeli troops over the past 24 hours in the Gaza Strip. In Afghanistan, more than 300 people were killed by floods caused by heavy rains in the province of Baghlan. And in Russia, Ukrainian forces killed three people during a rocket attack on the city of Donetsk on the eve of Republic Day. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Palestine, at least 28 civilians were killed in shelling by Israeli troops over the past 24 hours in the Gaza Strip. According to medical reports, these events also wounded about 69 people. One of the Israeli raids targeted the town of al Sawaida in the center of the Gaza Strip and another one in the north of Nusayrat camp. According to local health authorities, the number of Palestinians killed by Israelis since October 2023 rose to 34,097, while the number of wounded stood at 78,641. However, they warned that these figures could be even higher as many of the victims remain trapped under the rubble. In Palestine, a Palestinian journalist was killed along with his family in attacks by Israeli occupation forces in the Gaza Strip. Local media reported that the Israeli bombing targeted the journalist's home in the Habalia refugee camp in the northern Gaza Strip. According to official figures, more than 130 journalists and members of the sector have been killed in the Strip since the beginning of the Israeli aggression on October 7, 2023. Since the date, Israeli troops have also attacked dozens of media institutions, including the offices of Al Jazeera, Palestine TV, the Man News Agency, as well as the newspapers Al Quds and Al Ajam. The United Nations General Assembly has backed a Palestinian bid to become a full United Nations member. The Assembly adopted a resolution on Friday with 143 votes in favor and nine against, including the U.S. and Israel, while 25 countries abstained. This does not give the Palestinians full United Nations membership, but recognizes them as qualified to join and recommends the United Nations Security Council reconsider the matter favorably. The vote represents a global survey of support for the Palestinian bid to become a full United Nations member, a move that would effectively recognize a Palestinian state after the United States vetoed it in the United Nations Security Council last month. While it does not grant a vote in the body, the draft resolution will give the Palestinians some additional rights and privileges from September 2024, like a seat among the United Nations members in the Assembly Hall. I have stood hundreds of times before at this podium, but never for a more significant vote than the one about to take place, a historic one. A yes vote is a vote for Palestinian existence. It is not against any state, but it is against the attempts to deprive us of our state. That is why the Israeli government is so opposed to it, because they oppose our independence and the two-state solution altogether. The Russian ambassador to the United Nations, Vasily Nevencia, stressed that the resolution is an opportunity to correct the historical injustice experienced by the Palestinian people. It would usually require a careful study of the case. However, it is a question of granting additional rights not to just anyone, but to Palestine, who, due to the United States' stance, has had to be satisfied with partial membership in the United Nations after the adoption of this draft. However, it would have the opportunity to participate more effectively in the work of the United Nations and the meetings that take place under its chairmanship. We see in them the opportunity to correct the historical injustice suffered by the Palestinian people who have lost an unprecedented number of civilians in the last seven months as a result of Israeli actions, 
which have been covered up by the United States, as it has been doing for the last few years. In this context, the government of Venezuela, through a communique, celebrated the diplomatic victory of Palestine in the United Nations Organization, stating, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela celebrates the diplomatic victory of the courageous Palestinian people in the United Nations General Assembly, where the peoples and governments of the world have made it clear by an overwhelming majority that Palestine must be admitted as a United Nations member. In another paragraph, it is stated, Venezuela recalls that it has been the isolated, arbitrary, and just position of the United States, which as a permanent member of the Security Council has abused its right to veto and its position to pow of power, which has prevented for now the entry of Palestine as a full member and therefore urges this country to recognize and abide by the mandate of the General Assembly immediately. Finally, the government stressed the Bolivarian government joins the demand for a ceasefire and an immediate and unconditional halt to the genocide, urging international justice to determine the responsibilities for the crimes against humanity committed by the State of Israel. The Israeli War Cabinet decided to expand the operation against the city of Rafa amid growing tensions and international scrutiny. The Israeli War Committee unanimously approved by the deepening of military operations against the Rafa governorate despite the suspension of arms shipments by U.S. President Joe Biden. The Cabinet instructed Israeli negotiators to continue talks for the release of Israeli prisoners. On the other hand, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre indicated that Washington will not talk totally hold the supplies of missiles to Israel. On Friday, South Africa asked the International Court of Justice to order new provisional measures for the protection of the rights of the Palestinian people in Gaza under the Convention of the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. The African nation declared that the situation caused by the Israeli aggression on Rafah is causing irreparable damage to the rights of the Palestinian people in Gaza and therefore requested a modification of the previous prov provisional measures. It is worth mentioning that last January, the International Court Court of Justice ordered Israel to take measures to prevent a genocide against Palestine after South Africa filed a lawsuit against Israel for the crime of genocide. The Turkish government reiterates the suspension of its trade relations with Israel until a permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip is reached. The announcement was made by Turkey's Minister of Commerce, Omer Bolat, who publicly rejected the Israeli Foreign Minister's statement that Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan had ordered the lifting of the trade restrictions. Bolat reiterated that the suspension will remain in force until Israel stops its genocide against Palestine and allows humanitarian access to its population. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. More than 300 people were killed by floods caused by heavy rains in the province of Baglan. According to a United Nations agency, the Falul areas and the central villages of Barca district have suffered the most damage. More than a thousand houses were destroyed by the floods, leaving hundreds homeless. Emergency authorities have reported dozens of injured people who have been taken to hospitals for medical attention. The emergency authorities are also carrying out food deliveries with the help of helicopters since the roads are fluted. In China, the National Meteorological Center has issued a red alert for the geomagnetic storm hitting several cities. According to the weather agency, the storm began at 11 p.m. local time in Beijing on Friday, reaching the strongest index. In this sense, they report rainfall accompanied by thunderstorms, gales and hail, which flooded the streets and submerged vehicles, causing the suspension of school activities in the province of Guangxi. The agency urged people to be prepared for the situation and at advise drivers to be cautious about flooding and landslides on the roads.
In Colombia, the Day of Government with the Popular Neighborhoods, a strategy to reach the most excluded sectors of the country's large cities, concluded on Friday in the southwestern city of Cali. President Gustavo Petro accompanied the city's citizens of the Siloe neighborhood, considered the most dangerous in the country, in order to install their popular assembly for peace and life. The Siloe neighborhood, located in the department of Valle del Cauca, played an important role in the 2021 social outbreak, which left at least 150 51, 59 victims, of which 16 were young people killed by orders of the government of Vila and Duque. In Peru, the brother of President Nina Boluarte was arrested as part of an investigation for criminal organization and influence peddling. Nicanor Boluarte was preventively detained for a period of 10 days during an operative carried out by the special team of anti-power prosecutors authorized by the judici judiciary. According to investigations, the President Boluarte's brother is accused of being the leader of a criminal organization with influence in the appointment of prefects and sub-prefects. The arrest warrant issued by the first the Court of National Preparatory Investigation involves eight people, including the Peruvian president's lawyer, Mateo Castañeda. In Argentina, at least 60 people were injured on Friday after a collision between a passenger train and a locomotive in the Palermo Viaduct on Alcorta Avenue in Buenos Aires. The television channel C5N informed that the head of government of the city, Jorge Macri, ruled out the existence of fatalities but specified that 30 citizens are in serious conditions. According to that media, around 60 ambulances and two helicopters of the emergency medical attention system arrived at the scene and a relative was declared in the hospitals in the area. Firefighters and the police are also involved in the care and evacuation of these people. This com the company Trenes Argentinos stated that an investigation has been launched to determine the causes of the accident. Bolivia's President Luis Arce assured that the country has its sights set on consolidating its position as the world's leading producer of lithium carbonate. During a meeting with national journalists, the dignitary affirmed that a new impulse will be given to industrialization with the much faster technology of direct lithium extraction. Arce assured that his country will become sooner rather than later the first producer of lithium carbonate in the world and pointed out that he signed a key agreement with three foreign companies to help achieving this. Bolivia faces the process of industrialization of the chemicals and with a sovereign business model to promote the value chain of the 23 million tons it has the, in the salt flats of Uyuni and Coipasa in Potosi and Pastos Grandes in Oruro. In Chile, the military service is in question following the death of a recruit in the middle of a training march and the hospitalization of four young men, one of whom suffered the amputation of his hand. Judicial authorities are investigating the causes of the death of the 19-year-old conscript Franco Vargas, which occurred on April 27th while he was doing his military service in Putre. In this context, on Thursday it was confirmed that one of the maids of the young soldier hospitalized in the military hospital of Santiago lost hand which had to be amputated due to an infectious condition. After the death, more than a hundred conscripts have resigned to continue in the military ranks. Chilean judicial officials have traveled to the far north of to carry out the initial investigations. Cubans and Russians marched on Friday along Havana avenues on the occasion of Victory Day, which commemorates the triumph of the Soviet Union against Nazi Germany in 1945. Hundreds of people marched for the first time down Fifth Avenue to the Russian embassy carrying Russian and Cuban flags and photographs of family members. The demonstration takes place a day after President Diaz Canel accompanied Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow at the parade of the Soviet victory over the Nazis in 1945. During his stay in Russia, the Cuban leader condemned the geopolitical manipulation carried out by the U.S. government amid the conflict with Ukraine and NATO's threat to approach the Russian borders. Hmm. 
We have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Russia, Ukrainian forces killed three people during a rocket attack on the city of Donetsk on the eve of Republic Day. The shelling was carried out with a rocket launcher system on areas near the automobile mobilization for the referendum anniversary. Donetsk authorities said that at least eight people were wounded during the attack and material damage was registered on the territory. The district of Donetsk is continuously subjected to shellings by the Ukrainian militants who attacked the populated areas of the Republic. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed on Friday the decree appointing Mikhail Mishustin as the country's prime minister. According to the Kremlin press service, Putin previously submitted Mishustin's candidacy for the prime minister's position to the state Duma, and this legislative body approved it in plenary session on Friday and set a resolution to the country's president. A total of 375 deputies voted in favor of Mishustin's confirmation as prime minister, while 57 abstained. The new chief of staff must, no later than one week after his appointment, submit proposals to the president on the structure of the federal executive bodies. South Africa's top court heard an appeal on Friday to have former President Jacob Zuma declared ineligible to stand for Parliament, a politically charged legal showdown ahead of the tightest elections in decades. Zuma, 82, is fronting Umkonto We Siswe, a new opposition party that has become a potential disruptor in the May 29th general ballot. But electoral authorities have argued the graft tainted politicians should be barred from the race because of a 2021 contempt in of court convention. The Constitutional Court in Johannesburg was called to decide on the matter after a lower court sided with Suma in April, coming only weeks before what is expected to be the most competitive vote since the end of the Upper Haith and the advent, advent of democracy in 1994. The case has made some observers nervous. And let's go now to the world of sports, this time with news from the Olympic Games because Chileans Maria Jose Villard and Paula Gomez earned their birth to the Paris 2024 in the discipline of canoeing. In this regard, the canoeists secured their spot on the Chilean delegation to France as members of the C-2500 meters vote after advancing to the final of the World Cup in Hungary with a time of 2 hours, 4 minutes and 40 seconds. We continue in Latin America, but this time we go to the Caribbean because Dominican weightlifter Judailina Mejia has also secured participation in her first Olympic Games in the 81 kilogram category. Mejia joins her compatriot Chismeri Santana, who also achieved the Olympic dream after the International Weightlifting Federation officially announced the final ranking of the athletes who will compete in each category in the event. In Venezuela, several cultural organizations and activists mobilized on Friday for the opening of the Viva Venezuela World Festival to be held from May 10th to 19th at the Simón Bolívar Monumental Stadium in La Guaira. The Ministry of Culture informed that several national groups from all over the country, as well as members of the indigenous community, participate in a series of activities that include traditional dances and live concerts. The Ministry emphasized that the Viva Venezuela World Festival has become a historic celebration for the culture of the South American country. The inauguration of the festival was attended by President Nicolas Maduro. Moreover, the event coincides with the Afro-Venezuelan Day. A rare Baroque opera written by an indigenous man whose scores were hidden from for centuries in a church in the Bolivian Amazon has been revived with a performance in the Besido language. What makes this piece unique is that it is written in the Besido language. Besido is one of the languages of the Chiquitanos indigenous peoples who were grouped together by the Jews in the Amazon region in the 18th century. This dialect is one of the 37 officially recognized in Bolivia. Historians estimate that the play was written unanimously by the evangelized indigenous persons in 1740 
Haiti, although it has not been determined whether the play was performed in its, in its time. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.